Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. I think this is the first for Drinking Outside the Box video watchers, uh, an entire video dedicated to Oregon. And uh, the wines I've got today, all Oregon Pinot Gris. Now, uh, Oregon's got, uh, pro Oregon probably first is most famous for Pinot Noir. And uh, so I, I, I think part of the idea of them growing Pinot Gris is they experimented a bit with Chardonnay and uh, they experimented a bit with other members of the Pinot family. And what they found was that, uh, yeah, the Chardonnay was okay, though there's some really nice stuff, uh, but that the Pinot Gris that they ended up producing was significantly better than uh, that was being produced in uh, most of the other parts of the world. So they thought, well, let's stick with this. So uh, I don't know whether it outnumbers Chardonnay, but um, certainly outnumbers Chardonnay six to zero in this video. And uh, so let's just dig into them and see how we get on. I have got two from 2010 and four from 2009. First one is A to Z, so it's probably A to Z. Uh, it just says Oregon Pinot Gris. And I've got these arranged within the vintages in an alcohol order. So this one comes in at 13%. Well, Pinot Gris is the same as Pinot Grigio. And uh, when you think of Pinot Grigio, you think of something that's sort of quite light and quite light and really quite light. Uh, and whereas Pinot Gris tends to be a fuller, fleshier style, uh, maybe sometimes with a touch of sweetness. This, I suppose, it seems to fit like halfway between them. Uh, there's, there feels like there's a lightness and freshness, but there's also a rounded, slightly candied core. I don't know, I don't know if you remember those fruit salad sweets, the ones that were orange and pink. A little bit of that character here. So um, maybe the fruit flavours, yeah, on that peach, pear, um, it feels like it's going to be fresh, simple, honest, juicy, glovable. Let's see. Oh, interesting that one, because uh, you taste it, and yes, there is this pear and the peach, and you think it's just going to go with that little bit too flabby. Um, and then this edge of, um, well, I think it's the soil that's coming through. It may be a bit of the soil, maybe a bit of the grape. And the easiest thing I can describe it as is pumice stone. Did you used to have one of those pumice stones? I don't, I don't see them all that much uh, anymore. Uh, but in the bath, and uh, I, I, I can remember my parents' house, there was always one there, along with many other things that women collect in the bathroom for getting rid of hard skin. Why? Um, uh, diversions there, sorry about that. So yeah, I get this edge of pumice, um, and uh, the finish, um, I, I was going to use the word sweet, it's not, I don't think there's, a, there's any uh, actual sugar there to make it sweetness, but I think it's maybe a lack of acidity uh, that, that makes the finish just that little bit rounded and fatter. Maybe a little bit more acidity would have, would have been uh, uh, preferable, but it's a decent enough wine, and uh, certainly I'd sit out on a summer's day and uh, uh, quaff that with um, quite a lot of salmon, I think. Let's try the next one. The first one just said Oregon on. This one has this word on there, Willamette Valley. Willamette. First thing they'll, they'll teach you if you ever go to this place is how to pronounce it. They'll say, it's Willamette, damn it. So it's the Willamette Valley from Willakenzie Estate, 2010, estate grown Pinot Gris. So the first one was 13%. This one weighs in at 13 and a half. Well, it's funny, this is um, half a degree higher, so you'd expect uh, more body and, and uh, uh, richness. But when I stick my nose in there, well, two things I noticed. One of them is there's a touch of smokiness from oak. And the other thing, it feels like it's going to be a more precise, uh, it's going to have more of a minerally backbone. It feels like there's much more of a sense of soil. Yes, there's a little bit of that pumice character from the first one, but there's also uh, a, a, a sort of deeper, earthy character. I described that in compared with the first one. Larger but fitter. Um, so, it, yes, it weighs more, but it's probably thinner. Um, and, um, yes, it's a, a, a less of a waistline. So the flavours I've got, there, there is some of that peach, but there's also some citrus there. Uh, what they call stone fruits there, the peach, but it's, there's, there's the nectarine as well. Um, and, um, yeah, a little bit of apple there. Almost uh, quasi Chardonnay like, and particularly with this oak adding a little bit of uh, smoky vanilla sheen. Probably find out now that it's not been anywhere near an oak barrel, but um, uh, but yes, I, I've got a feeling that uh, that it, it, will have, it will have seen a little bit of oak there. Um, and uh, the flavours that, that what I'm left with again in the way that I was saying that that touch of sweetness uh, I was left with uh, on the first one here, I'm, I'm left with a much more precise, fine, yeah, higher cheekboned wine. And um, so a finer wine, but I think it's a more ambitious price too. Pretty good that. Let's move on to 2009's. Um, first one, Firesteed. Again, another one that these just says Oregon on. And uh, alcohol here, 13.1. I have to say, I give this a swirl and stick my nose in, I don't get an awful lot coming off it. Some wines uh, jump out of the glass, this one really has to be uh, persuaded and uh, still very little coming out. Let's taste it and see if there's a bit more. There's a bit of smokiness, there's um, 
a little bit of creaminess maybe, um, not huge amounts of fruit, bit of spice, which is quite nice, uh, but I miss, um, it, it feels it feels like a, a slightly uh, thin wine, it's funny, thin in terms of flavour, it's got quite a broad texture, it feels like it's a, a quite rounded wine, but in terms of concentration of flavour, not all that much there. Okay, but um, there are, well, we've already had better wines, least favourite of the three so far. Let's see, we're, uh, be uh, have better luck with uh, Willamette Valley Vineyards. 2009 again, and uh, I think this is 13.5%. Well, there's a rounded, quite exotic spiciness and uh, uh, rich, rounded grapiness uh, in here. Uh, it's funny that the, the flavours don't jump out of the glass, uh, but uh, as you agitate it, you get this soft uh, juiciness. And I've just had a look on the back label, and it says they've got a little bit of muscat in there for enhanced floral aroma, uh, Pinot Blanc for mouthfeel, and a little bit of barrel fermented Pinot Gris. Um, it feels like it's going to be a, a more delicate wine than the one before, despite those uh, uh, extra seasonings, if you want to call them that. Uh, but it also feels uh, like a more closed-in wine. I think this, this is a wine that still needs to, uh, to come out of its shell. Really not sure what I think about that wine, because um, there's um, it's certainly more concentrated than the one before, more going on there. But um, I just wonder whether in the efforts to, it, those extra things, it feels like someone's done something to plug in a few gaps. Uh, and I miss out, uh, I, I, I miss some, some of the uh, that more minerally purity that I was getting on, on the Willa Kenzie. Uh, it's, um, it, it's, it's dry and uh, it's certainly rich. But um, in terms of complexity, not all that much of that. So can't fault it for concentration, but um, I think it's quite an ambitious price. I think it's over 20 quid a bottle. I'm expecting a little bit more, um, yeah, a little more, bit more going on. It's good, but um, at that price, I think I deserve a little more. I'm going to try this later on today with some, um, some other people, so I'll be interested to see whether that has come out of its shell. But at the moment, um, it's soft. E easy drinking and um, I think I want more than easy drinking uh, for 20 quid. Let's see whether this one is easy drinking. So the last two f um, 2009s, uh, both 14.5% alcohol. So first one we have is a Duck Pond and then it says uh, Freeze Family Cellar. Cell. I'm presuming it's Freeze rather than Fries. You want Freeze with that. So there's 2009 Pinot Gris. Something quite exotic here and quite spicy. Um, almost um, as if there's some, one that, uh, like a strange German wine, like some Reichensteiner or some uh, Huxelraber in there to give it this uh, floral, uh, aromatic lift. Uh, it's, um, it's funny, the alcohol doesn't come through, it doesn't feel like it's going to smell hot or anything. Uh, certainly in terms of colour, it's quite a pale wine, uh, so it doesn't feel like someone's trying to extract as much flavour. And, uh, but interesting to see whether it, um, yeah, whether it pans out like that when I try it. The heat comes through on the finish. Um, the wine it reminds me most of, um, Koshu. I don't know if you've ever tried Koshu. It's um, it's a Japanese wine, and um, Koshu is a great variety that grows there. Um, it's rounded and it's soft. Maybe the closest European uh, equivalent is some some Swiss wines made from Fondant. Um, which are all about roundness and softness, and uh, I miss acidity there. I miss freshness. Uh, I don't don't get a mineral tang coming through. Um, it feels okay. Um, certainly wouldn't. Uh, uh, it certainly would finish my glass. But I don't know how much uh, uh, whether I'd be reaching for a second glass because the finish I'm left with is quite fat, broad, simple, and um, I want a bit more from my wine than just something that's fat and simple. Let's see whether we get more than that on the final one. Uh, Sockle Blosser, uh, 2009 Pinot Gris, again, 14.5% alcohol. Ingredients, uh, sunshine, buckets of rain, more sunshine, more... Oh, someone slapped a label on here, so I can't read it. I hope it doesn't say Morris Dancing. Uh, fruits of sustainable farming. Well, this is one where you can feel uh, as if uh, it's, it's quite a big wine there. So this is rounded peachy plushness, but it doesn't go into, into that overripe character. Those what I call the Koshu characters, the soft, uh, ever so slightly creamy, leasy uh, characters of the, of the one before are there as well. Um, maybe uh, I would prefer a little bit more freshness in here, but um, it feels like it's going to be a, a yeah, solid, uh, solid, fleshy, but uh, more interesting wine than uh, maybe the two that have gone before. Yes, and there's a roundness and richness there, but uh, as with the best of these, uh, there is, there's still a spine of something uh, that, that comes in there. So I noticed the round peachy, uh, bit of musky pear character coming through there, um, and then there's this little uh, 
a spine of acidity. If anything, if I have a problem with it, I, I wish they'd picked it a little bit earlier to get a, capture a little bit more freshness, a bit more acidity in there. But certainly the finish I'm left with is, uh, it's not flabby. Uh, it's interesting. It makes me want to have a bit more. And... Um, but uh, I, for me, the Willa Kenzie is the star of these six. Uh, that, that's a, a second. But um, interesting set of six wines. Um, and um, if you've tried Oregon Pinot Green, you've had different experiences with them than I've had with these, please do comment on the videos, either on my website or on YouTube. But um, otherwise, I will see you in the next one. And for the moment, see you soon.